other than what I'm about to preach, and I'll be brief in that. But the word is vulnerable. The word is vulnerable. And I say this to you for this reason. Until you open your heart and you're vulnerable to God, and the reason we don't open our heart to God is because we've been hurt by man. And so we close off part of our heart. But as you open your heart to God more and more and more, you become vulnerable. It's a scary feeling. It's scary to think that I'm exposed out there before the world. But as you do that, God begins to speak life. He begins to breathe newness into you. He begins, again, trust me, it's a scary thing. But with God, it's a safe thing. And you can trust him. Vulnerable is the word for today. I'm going to share with you a little bit. I will not go into all of this uh, because it's too long. Uh, five pages of scripture might be too much for right now. But I will share with you. Let's pray. And then I will share with you. Thank you for those with words and, and with uh, tongues and interpretation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the story is from uh, Exodus, thir or Exodus 13 and 14. It's the story of the Red Sea. And I'll just give you the highlight reel. But it's the story of the Red Sea when God calls them out. You know, that's the picture of us, right? Being saved. It's the Passover and we're saved. And then he brings us out to bring us into the promised land. It fulfills as it begins to fulfill the feast. Here's what actually begins to take place. They begin to move. And in chapter 13, God tells them, and he makes it very clear. He says, I'm not going to take them the easy route because they will not be ready for the battles there. So I'm going to take them the long way so that they can prepare for the battles that are coming their way. It's okay. Let them pray as long as they need to. It's good. Then in chapter 14, Moses begins to speak. God has said, I go by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And then they're, they're here, and here comes the Egyptian army following them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, chapter 14, verse 1, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and encamp at a certain place. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled and they're going to lose. Do you know the enemy says that about you right now? The enemy says, I can beat you down till you cannot overcome it. I can overtake your mind till you can't overcome it. And in a lot of cases, he can do that to people. Pharaoh takes 600 chosen, then all the chariots with him, and he pursues after them. Now, I want you to notice something, and I'm trying to find the exact scripture I want. He literally says, God says, I send Pharaoh. I hardened his heart, and I send him to come against you that I will receive glory. So if you think you're going to get saved and everything's going to be rose petals and rainbows, you're wrong. It doesn't work that way. God's dealing with you to make you holy because the way our flesh is isn't holy. And then the world's coming against you to defeat you. But here's what the verses I want you to catch. And Micah, if you can catch me. Verse 13 of chapter 14 of Exodus. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see no more, no more forever. Now, I want you to listen. Moses was hearing the voice of God, but sometimes we get a little bit of us in the voice of God. If we're a negative person, we like to read Scripture and find all the negative in it. If we're a positive person, we like to find all the positive in it. But we can literally feed it in a direction. So Moses said, fear not, be still. And you know, there's a lot of verses that says, be still and know that I am God. But did you know in Psalms when it says, be still and know that I am God, it literally means after the battle, in context, it means after the battle. It doesn't mean when you're getting ready to go into battle. It doesn't mean that. It's never meant that. Here's Moses telling the children of Israel, the Egyptian army is right on their tails. They're about to destroy them. And Moses says, stand still and see the glory of the Lord. Let's listen to God's response. 14, Moses says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Verse 15 says, and the Lord 
Yahweh says to Moses, Why or wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel. Tell them to move. The enemy wants you to stand still so he can catch you. Moses told the people, stand still and know that he is God. And God says, why are you even talking to me? Move. Move forward. Move forward. If we are not careful, the enemy will take us and make us so complacent that we're in coast mode. He'll make us believe if we're not careful. He'll say, and things like this, and I love scripture that says, be still. And people say, well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm just, and the Lord said, move. Move. See, there's people in this room today, someone was supposed to pray over you. And I stood, no, before you did. I, someone was supposed to pray over you. Someone in this room was supposed to pray over you. They had a word to pray over you. And they didn't come forward and do that. And I stood here travailing. God, let them see that. And not putting them down because it's scary to move God. But the reality of it is we ended up doing because we were back up because you needed prayed for. But the end of the road is this. When God's people stop moving, the kingdom of God stops moving among God's people. It is time that God's people move. I know it's ugly out there. I know it's a war out there. I know you're going to face stuff. But here's what God said to them. He said, move. And then he spoke to Moses and he said, Moses, Lift your rod and I'll part the Red Sea. But I want you to do your part. And they were going to stand still and wait for the army to crush them, Mark. God said, I'll deliver you. But I want you to move. Move forward. Inside of us is this anointing. Inside of us is the God of all creation. If you're a born-again child of God, inside of you, if you're truly born again, and I'm not talking about repentance that's worldly, but I'm talking about godly repentance that draws man to God, and you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and you're striving to follow him, and God lives inside of you. And he said, move. Move. Think about the enemy crushing people every day that have the power inside of them to defeat him. Why do you think I get excited when Tom says, God just spoke to me and said, call Sterling? Why do you think I get excited when I see someone's face at 3 a.m. and I wake up and I see someone's face? Because the Spirit of God is speaking to me with an unction saying, pray for that person right here, right now. I didn't wake you up to see what's on TV. I woke you up so that you can pray on that person's behalf. Why do you think God uses people? Here's what he said to Moses. Hold out your rod and I'll part the sea. I'll send a wind. All he had to do was destroy the Egyptian army. He didn't want to do that. He wanted Moses to be involved. He wanted the children of God to be involved so that they could see the victory of the Lord in them. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we get things like, well, I'm too young. Well, I'm too old. Well, I don't have a good voice. Well, I don't know if this is God or not. If they're telling you to go, if the voice is telling you to go Tanya Hardy on somebody, for the older folks, you know what I'm talking about? That's not God's voice. But if the voice of God is speaking to you to go to someone and tell them it's going to be okay, or go to them and say, I'm praying for you, or go to them and lay hands on the sick, Mark chapter 16 verse 15 tells us this. It says, and to those that believe, these signs shall follow them that believe. They will cast out demons. That's inside of you. Unless you let the enemy defeat you with it. 
See, we have to expose our hearts to God and say, use me. We sing songs like, I surrender all. And the truth is, if we sing it right, sometimes I surrender 31%. I'll give you 49, but not 51. Then you'd be in control, and I can't have that. <laughs> Inside of you is the power to change sweet home forever. Inside of you is the power to overcome. You say, does that mean nothing bad's going to happen? Are you serious? You're reading the same book I am? Ugly stuff's going to continue to happen. But where is God's people? Moses said to the people, Stand still and watch what God will do. God says, Why are you even talking to me right now? Go! Go forward! So am I going to believe the one that says, Just wait and see what God's going to do next? Or the one that says, God's already done it? Well, if God would just do this for me, or God would just... He said on Calvary, it is finished. That's not a Cadillac in every garage, but that's God speaking to your life. And trust me, the closer you get, the harder it gets. And holiness is a part of it. you got to live godly. You're going to make mistakes, but you can't go out and live like the world and expect God to breathe life into you on it. Church, if I've got one word for you today, here it is. Move. Move in the direction God was going when you saw him last. If he wants to turn you, he will. But it is time that we move for God. If you feel like you're supposed to pray for somebody, pray. If you feel like you're supposed to lay hands on somebody, lay hands on them. If you feel like you're supposed to call somebody that's about to get bad news and you don't even know why, but God says call them and tell them you're favored, then call them and tell them they're favored. Bill Vincent was standing in an altar praying for his son. And God said, tell him his son's going to be saved. And I said, I don't know that. He said, I didn't ask you what you knew. Tell him. So I go to Bill and I say, I'm not sure if this is confirmation. I don't know. But God said to tell you that your son's going to be saved. He said, thanks. He goes back to his seat and the guy behind him leans forward and says, God told me to tell you your son's going to be saved. And the man shouted the house down. You know why? Because two different people heard from God. And expected because out of the mouth of two or more witnesses a thing is true. What if someone is trying to believe for their healing and they need one more confirmation and God gave it to you to speak into them? Move. 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 I love it when I love it when we try to justify with excuses. Everybody loves excuses, right? Well, I had four pennies and not four cents, so I couldn't do it. I would have bought two pieces of bubble gum. Can you still get bubble gum for two cents? Probably not. I don't know. But if God tells you to bring the pastor a bag of Butterfingers, bring them. I'll eat them. Don't call cursed what God calls blessed. Ha! Church, if we're waiting on a move of God, it might be that God's waiting on a move from us. It might just be that God's waiting on his people to move. Young people, try sharing Jesus at school. Well, they'll make fun of me. So what? They're going to make fun of you anyway. They're going to find something to laugh about, right? I love to direct what they're making fun of me about. Wendy says, you shouldn't do that. You know they're going to talk about you. I said, I know, but at least I know what they're talking because I set the stage for it. If we truly are in the last days, and I believe that with everything in me, it is time that God's church got out of their pews and began to move forward. I want to see a revival. God wants to see a revival that rocks our cities and our communities.
God placed you here for such a time as this. And he placed an anointing and a power inside of you. And ears from your heart to hear his voice. In fact, he cried it out today. Hear his voice and then move. Last thought. Second to last thought. Evil doesn't wait. I'm going to get a little graphic here. But the rapist isn't driving down the street thinking, you know, I'll do that again sometime later. He's looking for someone that he can abuse. A thief isn't driving down the road going, pretty car, I wouldn't steal that one. Not today, no. He's going, how can I get that one? Because the enemy knows to move. God's people need to understand that we are to move. We are to move forward. Take the land. Take the land. Move. Move. Picture yourself with Pharaoh's army. I'm done. I don't have to preach anymore today. I mean, I don't get the privilege to preach anymore today. Brother Robertson's doing a good job. Picture yourself right now, if you can, with the Israelite army. And the Egyptians are bearing down on you. God said, move that way. But I'm not sure what's going to happen that way. I don't know how deep the water is. I'm not sure what's, I don't know what's going to happen. So I'd rather take my chances with those guys, which I know what's going to happen. They're here to kill me. So I think I'll listen to Moses and stand still instead of listen to God and move forward. Won't you be shocked when everybody else made it across and you're still there. Buried at the bottom of the Red Sea with the Egyptians. There was time God's body moves. It's time and I believe God is calling us to move and he will move with us. He will move in power and might. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct you. But he cannot direct you if you will not move. It's time. And here's what God said. You may paraphrase it for today. Why are you praying to me and asking me what's next? Why are you asking me? Move! Get up! Move! I don't know how God would have said it. It might have been more like, move. <laughs> but I know this. There's an army in this room today that can rock the foundations of this earth. But not if we're like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Water's rising, it's time to move. It's time the body of Christ move forward. I pick on this guy a lot, and I'll close with, with you, Mark. I know where I'm supposed to be right here. I know that. And it's a good feeling. But as a pastor, y'all didn't hear any of this. I joy in watching your discomfort right now. Let me tell you why. Because God's calling him back to pastoring. He's had some time off. And now he's got that nothing's going to be settled. Nothing feels right anymore. Nothing's working right anymore. Everything's all messed up feeling. And, and he wouldn't tell you that. But I'll tell on him. I don't care. He don't have a lot of friends. I'm basically his only one. So I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love Mark to death. He brought wings yesterday to my house. God is good. Yeah, you know the way the pastor's heart's through wings, right? The hotter, the better. Um, but when I see that discomfort, I grin inside because God's moving you. And even though you don't have a church yet to preach in, and even though you don't have that situation settled, and, but God is stirring inside to move. As God will fulfill it. And he'll do the same for everyone in this room. But you've got to stop letting the enemy tell you to sit and wait. 
What about Isaiah 40, 31? They that wait upon the Lord. By the way, in case you're wondering, it, that's a 1611 translation, wait. And it literally means hope. It's an action word. Just in case you're wondering, they that hope is action in the Lord shall renew. That's an action word. Their strength, they shall mount up. That's action. They shall run. That's action. They shall walk. That's action. God didn't say sit around and wait. They shall fly. They shall mount up. It's action. God wants to move through you. And so the word from the Lord today the second word from the Lord is move. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, make the best move today. Make the best move today. Say, Father, forgive me. Well, I got to clean up first. No, you don't. He didn't say I make you cleaners of fish. He said I make you fishers of men. Go catch them. Let God do the cleaning. My job ain't to clean you up. Daryl, I'd shave your beard if I could. No, I'm just kidding. I love it. It matches mine. All gray and Good to see Daryl and Nellie with us today and their lovely family. Amen. Yeah. If you don't know Christ, I beg you today to meet him. But if you do know him, it's time to move. It's time to begin to move on behalf of the kingdom of God. Share Jesus with somebody. Share a scripture on your social media. Do something. I didn't say go out and beat everybody to death with a brick. I wasn't, but love somebody. Because we were joking earlier, me and Stan, you're not going to hit me in the head with a ball bat and invite me to church. I'm not coming. But if you love me, I'll show up. If you just love on me, I'll come see what you're all, the love's all about. There's a movement of God spreading across the world today. He wants you to be a part of it. And if you don't think it's happening, you need to watch the news from the other side. Watch the souls being saved and the dead being raised. Four days dead, bitten by cobras and they're dying and mama keeps praying and they come back from the dead and go back to work the next day. That wouldn't work in America because we wouldn't want to go back to work the next day. But just kidding. God is on the move. It's time God's people get on the move. Stand with me if you will. I don't know what you need. I don't know. Maybe God has spoken to you to pray for somebody in the room. Maybe you need to just go do that. Maybe you just need to go lay hands on somebody. You don't even have to have a plan. You just say, hey, God said, can I pray with you? And, and lay hands on them and start praying. They won't stop you. Maybe you need to call somebody that hadn't been here in a long time. And say, I just want you to know I love you and I miss you desperately at church. Man, I can't wait. Do you need a ride? Is there something I can do? Maybe you need to cast out the demon of your next door neighbor. I don't know. But I know that Moses said, stand still. And God said, are you serious? Move. Move. Move on behalf of God. First of all, that's salvation. Second of all, that's anything else you need. Or anything else he needs from you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for that verse I hadn't caught that way before. Thank you for loving us. As we open up this altar, I pray that you would stir hearts. If there's someone here that needs a touch, a healing, deliverance, victory, whatever it is. God, that we would be about the Father's business and let them move forward today. In Jesus' name, amen. Altar's open.